Today, we're going to talk about how to improve your worship team. Let's jump into it. What's going on, fam? It's Michael, and I help worship leaders grow spiritually and practically so that they can lead their worship ministries more effectively. And today, I'm going to give you some tips on how you can drastically build and improve your worship team. But before we get started, I want to let you have access to my worship leader checklist. This checklist has 10 tips on it that I would guarantee you would help you to increase your worship leading effectiveness. You can get it for free right now at my website, michaeleagle.com slash worship leader checklist. Of course, you can look at the description for the link below. Now, Let's jump into how we can improve, how we can build, how we can uh, get your worship team to be more effective. All right, let's jump into today's video. So look, I want your worship team to be strong. I want your worship team to be healthy. I want your worship team to be effective. Every time they grab a mic, every time they hit the stage, I want them to usher in the presence of God. But in order to do that, there's a couple ground level things that you as a worship leader and you as a worship team member must do to make sure that all of you guys are on one accord. If you stick around to the end, there is one thing that I promise you, you need to work on on your worship team that you are overlooking. And I want to reveal it to you as my last one. So stick around to hear that one. And the very first thing that you need to do in order to build a strong worship team or in order to improve the worship team that you have, if you have to identify the weaknesses and the strengths of your team. Look, if you are a worship leader, you need to evaluate your worship team. You need to look at them. You need to study them. You need to take notes on what you guys do well and what you guys don't do well. You need to evaluate. Are we great singers? Are we great communicators? Are we great listeners? <laughs> you know, are we, uh, uh, are we great worshipers? Are we great praisers? You know, then you need to look at, okay, what do we do wrong? Okay. Do we sing notes wrong? Do we get team uh, relationships wrong? You need to really evaluate your team and don't be afraid of the negatives because there are some great things that your worship team does positively as well. So write down the cons, write down the negatives, write down the pros, write down the good things that you guys do and just look at it and say, evaluate. Okay. This is what I need to do. Now, everything I'm going to share with you today is coming directly directly from my upcoming workshop, Building a Strong Worship Team. In this workshop, I'm going to take an hour and a half of just giving you tips, giving you tools, giving you everything that I know of how to build an effective and a build a strong worship team. We're going to be talking about how to build a community, how to deal with different challenges. We're going to talk about how to build relationships. It's going to be a deep dive on everything worship team related. If you want to get access to that workshop, you can go to this website, michaeleagle.com slash team, T-E-A-M, and you can join us for that workshop. That workshop is October 30th, and it's going to be power packed. We already got a couple seats filled, and I want you to join us. And look, if you're saying, hey, Mike, I'm watching this months down the road, I probably missed the workshop. Don't worry, if you go to that website, it'll still give you the, the power to access <laughs> the replay. Now, the second thing that you need to do after you've identified your weaknesses and identified your strengths, now you need to set up a space or set up a time where you can work on those weaknesses and even strengthen those strengths. This is where effective rehearsals comes into play. Um, sometimes when we have rehearsals, we just go on there just focused on, okay, what we're going to do on service, you know, what songs we're going to sing. Let's just practice those and go over those. But we need to take time out of rehearsals, in our rehearsals, and work on our weaknesses. So if our weaknesses is relationships, we need to work on how can we build better relationships 
and our worship team. If our weaknesses is singing the notes or <laughs> singing the music correctly or playing the music correctly, of course, you want to make sure that you tighten those things up. But you want to make sure that you take time in your rehearsals to strengthen those weaknesses. Well, look, when you work on things in private, they begin to show up in public way better, way more polished. So you want to work on those weaknesses in your rehearsals. Now, while you're working on those weaknesses, I want you to shine a light on the things that you guys do well. So if you guys are great worshipers, great, uh, uh, you show how your worship outwardly great. You want to tell your team to continue to do that. Whatever you do strong, whatever you do well, you want to build on those things and do those things over and over and over. Now, after you've already evaluated and then you've put together a plan for your rehearsals to work on your weaknesses and work on your strengths. The last thing that you need to do, and everybody misses this last thing. I'm telling you, people don't put enough emphasis on this very last thing that you need to do. And that is you need to build stronger relationships in your worship team. So many worship teams are great musically. They are great when it comes to doing all of the musical things. But when it comes to building relationships with the people that are on the side of them, the people that are ministering uh, with them, we do a poor job at that. So as a worship team member, as a worship leader, you want to cultivate a space or cultivate a community where you guys can get to know each other on a more deeper level. When the team is connected with relationships, you will see an effectiveness come from them like no other. Look, I've noticed that every time that there is some sort of family singing group, whether that's the Jackson Five, whether that's uh, uh, the Clark Sisters, whether that's the Winans, any group that has a family dynamic the harmonies are better. The effectiveness of how they're leading is better. It's just so much stronger when there's a family dynamic. So you as a worship leader, you need to find a way to create this family dynamic in your worship team, whether that's going out um, to eat together, whether that's having uh, game nights, whether that's doing hosting little uh, various worship things where all of you guys can get together. You need to find a way to build a strong relationship with everyone on the team because that's going to be a part of your effectiveness. Look, as congregation members, we can see when you guys are not on one accord. So if you guys can strengthen that family dynamic, that community dynamic, I promise you it's going to improve your worship team and help you guys to be more effective. Now, look, if this video blessed you today, don't forget to give it a like and go ahead and subscribe so that you can get notified every time that we post a new video. Don't forget to grab my worship leader checklist. That is free. You can go to michaeleagle.com slash worship leader checklist and get that for free. Also, if you want more teaching on building a worship team, I want you to join my workshop October 30th, 2024. This is a great workshop. We're going to be talking about how to build relationships. What are the characteristics of a worship team member? It's going to be a full out deep dive on everything worship team. You can go to michaeleagle.com slash team to get access to this workshop. And if you're watching on the replay well past October, you can still get the replay. And I promise you the replay is going to help you to build your team significantly. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.